there was only one punishment for the Jewish people. There were no judges, no juries, not even prisons. If they caught you doing anything um, against their ordinances, they simply shot you on the street. And every day there were many people laying on the street, and there were people going around with push carts and picking up these bodies. This was going on for a while, and then a new ordinance came that the Jewish people can no longer reside in Krakow. But they gave us a choice. That's the only choice they ever gave throughout the whole war, is that if you didn't want to stay in Krakow, because in Krakow they made a ghetto, one of the first ghettos, and they said, people who want to stay in Krakow have to move into the ghetto. Otherwise, you can leave the city and you're allowed to live in a small neighboring community, but not in a big city. So my sister Lola, uh, she was about 16 years old at the time, um, or maybe even less, and she had a young man who pursued her. He was crazy in love with her. So he comes to my father, and of course it was mutual, she loved him too, and she, he comes to my father and says, Mr. Lesser, you know how I feel about Lola. Someday I'd love to marry her, but do me a favor. I'll take care of everything. Just come to the same communities that my parents and I am going. And I guess my father, given the choice to go into a ghetto or to a small community, he chose to go along with this small community. And Michael and my father, they all started to pack. We could only take what you can lift up, you know, no furniture, only small packages and, and, and sacks full of things. So that's when we found out that my father had 1,000 American dollars that he saved up for a rainy day. He took that money and he pasted it into one of the religious books and he put it in a sack full, of, mixed it up with the other books and now we had two sacks full of these books and we're now leaving Krakow. As we are leaving the city, We're out on the outskirts of the city of Krakow. We're being stopped by the Nazis. Halt! And two husky Nazis jump on the wagon. And the first thing they wanted to know, do you have any Jewish literature? Books! And they saw two sacks full of books. They picked them up and heaved it on the side of the road where they had a lot of books already because everyone who... Um, who left Krakow had to use that road. And that's why they were waiting there. And they were going to have a big bonfire with all of these Jewish literature books. And anyway, my sister Lola spoke a beautiful German. All of us spoke German. Um, but... My sister was beautiful, and she walks up to this monster, and she says, Look, my father is a writer. He wrote his autobiography. Let him keep this one book. And he looks at her, and I guess he liked the way she spoke. He says, Okay, we'll give you five minutes if you can find it. Well, the whole family started to climb on a mountain of books. All these books look alike. They're all leather-bound, brown or black, and you keep sliding down. And they were enjoying to watch, watch us out, trying to find this book. And then after five minutes, they chased us away. We couldn't find the book. 
Now, my father has a family of six uh, to feed, and he doesn't have a penny to his name. He's going to a new community, and it's not like you can get a job. Jewish people were not allowed to be hired. So he, you couldn't recognize him. He was so worried. Now, I said we were six people because... Uh, actually, my oldest sister, Goldie, was left in Munkaj. When the war broke out, she was um, left with her grandparents in Munkaj, and she couldn't come across the border anymore. They closed the borders. So she was pretty safe because Munkaj was Hungary, and Hungary was a free country. Thank you.